Hello everybody, this is Bitcoin Micro and this is the first video guys from a series of videos that I'm going to be making about the current correction, how we topped, why we topped. I'm going to make a full analysis from very top signals because I want to make this video and this series of videos very, very educational. So I'm going to go through several of the tools that I'm using because many people are asking me about some stuff that I talk about, some stuff that I use, and they want to know how I use every single one of them. And for example, many people have been asking me, how could we track the tops? How could we potentially find tops in the future and not rely on what other people say on the internet? So in this first video, guys, I'm going to go through the buy indicator. I'm going to go through some stuff that I saw in terms of my technical analysis. Then I'm going to go through like various other things regarding the technical analysis and observation that are not exactly technical analysis but more like observations of mine on the chart and then i'm going to do some very very useful indicators like the vwap mrvr major multiple stock to flow nvt and sopr so these are various tools they're not exactly indicators but they are something like models or they're using the price and some other tools which might be a little bit like on-chain indicators so they are not exactly purely technical analysis tools but they are still sort of tracking the price and they are observing several things that in my opinion are very very useful so let's get straight into it guys so first one the pi cycle top indicator which is one of the most useful ones so far because many people have said it's not going to be useful, it's not going to work, but actually it called the top once again. So it was one of the very key signals that was a big warning. Although the top came in a weird fashion, it didn't come like the usual topping formations that we've had so far, it, it signaled a top nevertheless. So what the pie indicator is, very briefly, is essentially the crossover of the 111 day moving average and a newly created moving average which is the 350 day moving average times two so it uses the 350 day moving average but it's not twice a day it's actually twice the price value and that's why you see that the 111 day moving average is very close to the 350 day moving average times two Otherwise, they would be very far away from each other. But actually, in these ones, they converge significantly. So far, even that nice 11, 111 day moving average was acting as support. Somebody could see it as well. It was very close to the 128 day moving average. And that's why it's pretty similar to that one, which historically has been another great indicator for calling tops and bottoms. But overall, I'm just going to mention the pie indicator because it's very useful. It has called every single top. Maybe in the future it doesn't work, maybe. But so far it has done it with incredible precision. It called both tops back in 2013 and the cycle top in 2017 now maybe in the bull market in the current bull market this is just another correction and not a proper uh, bear market maybe the bear market especially this one might be a lot shorter than the previous ones because in my opinion this might be a mid cycle correction it's a very very weird one because we actually went very high very quickly and for many other reasons that i'm going to mention on the rest of the videos we just went too high and we didn't really have that strength to continue higher uh, and because we didn't have the proper corrections early on that kind of became a little bit of a drag to the market maybe it's a size maybe it's other stuff as well but in my opinion this doesn't look like a classical uh, cycle top so maybe it's like a 2013 mid cycle correction so the first stop but nevertheless, that one was very, very important because it was about 8, 80%. Maybe this one is a little smaller. Maybe it goes down to 70%. Maybe we retest the all-time highs back at 20,000. Who knows? I'm going to talk about this in the future videos because on the next videos, guys, I'm going to keep on talking about the correction. Maybe the next one or two videos, depending on how my time goes, because I don't want to make them too long. And then in the other videos, I'm going to talk about how to spot some bottoms, uh, where we could bottom, uh, what to look next and so on. 
So, so far we've seen that this has been working and then the next one guys will be RSI. I'm just going to go through my technical analysis tools. I'm not going to bore you guys with just very theoretical stuff. But the key thing with this uh, indicator has been the fact that if the indicator starts going down while the price keeps going up, that's what I call divergence. So I assume that most of you guys know about that stuff and the divergence here was very, very clear, especially when the divergence happens at oversold levels, like it happened at 62,000 and 64,000 while the RSI was about 75 and 70. Then once the RSI started turning, once it got oversold, we didn't really get a proper reaction like we would have expected. And that was the first time that maybe things aren't going so well. Because if the indicator here hadn't really bottomed and the price hadn't really bottomed, potentially we would have seen the indicator come all the way back down or we would have seen the price make a new low. But in this situation back in 2020 at 10K, we didn't really get a second low while the indicator started going higher. While in this situation, we were coming off a very, very overbought condition. So the indicator was overbought for a really long time. Then once it started touching those conditions, the overbought condition, it started dropping, which is not a great sign because usually the what we care about in the bull market is the oversold condition to lead to a new high. After the market becomes over, oversold in a bull market, that's usually when we know that there's going to be continuation to the upside and it's the best opportunity to buy the dip, especially if the market hasn't been oversold for a really long time, which is about seven months in this situation, seven to eight months, okay? And currently we have another dip. We're making a lower low. Uh, the structure has really changed. This is the major key thing that to watch right now because in a bull market, we don't really want to be seeing new lows. Of course, what I'm looking at right now is the BLX chart because this is going to be the best one for me to show you some things, guys, without being affected by the price or the current price action. But the other thing is that usually if the price doesn't seem to be bouncing while it's oversold, it usually is indicating for a crash. Usually when the price is oversold, we want it to have a quick bounce. We don't want to we don't want it to keep drifting on the support. That's a very, very important thing to note. And now this is on the daily chart, of course. If we look at the three day chart, the situation is even worse because what we know about the RSI is that usually the key selling signal usually starts when the market goes from overbought and drops below the 70 level. Maybe sometimes the first time it doesn't really work that well, but eventually once it has a clean break, that's usually a selling signal. Once we have that nice breakdown, because again, here we had a series of higher highs, many, many higher highs actually, four consecutive higher highs and four consecutive higher, uh, excuse me, lower highs on RSI, which is a very, very bad sign. So potentially until the market go, gets oversold, on the three day, maybe the market could keep dropping lower. And especially if the price, if the RSI goes below 50, that's another bearish signal because that means the momentum is currently pointing down and we don't want to see that in a bull market. And finally, if I look at the weekly chart, this is a very bad sign because if we look and compare the RSI with the previous tops, we go so oversold, or excuse me, overbought, that we, especially, we essentially go as oversold as we were in the 2017 top. That was how overbought we got. We were even more overbought than we were in June 2019 and way more overbought than most of the previous highs. And it was very close actually to the one of 2013 as well. Now, maybe the price has to get oversold, maybe, but usually so far, at least in the previous bull markets, the price would stop, or at least the RSI would stop around 55. This time around, it has broken 55, which is definitely not a good sign, especially if we look at BTC, USD on other charts, on the actual sport chart, because right now it has dropped below 70. So what we need to see is a very strong correction especially bounce very, very quickly. That's a big, big thing. 
then the next one guys i'm just gonna zoom in a little bit and go into some other um moving average so i'm gonna use the 50 day moving average and the 200 day moving average which are my favorite ones at least for giving examples and i'm gonna show you guys something about the 300 day moving average on other videos but my expectation was at least that we could potentially touch the 200 day moving average at some point and i'm going to talk about the major multiple and why the 200 day moving average can be seen like when the price goes way too high way much above the 200 day moving average is usually a topping signal but the main thing that i would like to focus is on the 50 day moving average because here we touch the to the 50 day moving average twice and we touched it perfectly and we bounced straight after we touched it and that's not a good sign guys why because that usually means that a lot of traders that just follow simple strategies were able to make money they didn't get stopped out so we kind of gathered a lot of weak hands during this uptrend which is another topic i'm going to talk very very soon because the more weak hands we get on the bull market that we don't shake out eventually that comes crashing down because the correction at least the market can't really handle so many people that are ready to sell at any point so what happened here was we were trending higher like with the rsi there was divergence we started slowing down we have the first breakdown then you have another breakdown and we start seeing the moving average turn down so rather than going up the moving average side turning around it started pointing down which is a very very big shift in the direction and it's not a bullish sign especially after such a big move up now the 200 day moving average is not as useful in this situation but what happened was once we started breaking below it it was just another thing that added fuel to the fire and that's why there was a big capitulation because at least most people in my opinion myself included to an extent we were expecting a bounce on this area and this is what I'm talking about right now because we were looking at the support combo that was right here so this is essentially a support combo where we have the broken resistance where we had a very big pump and usually the market tends to come back down to those areas the market usually comes back down to retest a breakout to just see essentially if there are enough strong bars there are enough strong hands and it's a very very healthy sign but whenever that doesn't happen that's a bit of a problem because that means once again the market hasn't really tested the weak and the strong hands and we've had this several times during this bull market because we had it at 19k we had several gaps which i'm going to talk about as well we also had it here as well we didn't test 25k we also had that weird double bottom which wasn't perfect it essentially was a combination of the Elon pump and the Wall Street bet situation because in my opinion the price could have come down to these levels right here but then essentially that gave it a very very big boost and the price went much higher than it would have originally uh, gone at least that's my opinion that's my interpretation maybe it wouldn't have gone down much but potentially it could have come down to 27k and slowly went up again in a more healthy fashion rather than do this very very sharp increase and then we had more speculation with micro strategy buying billions again so essentially the market got very frothy very quickly because everyone kind of front run the market and the cycle and that's why in my opinion we've had this very large correction now another important thing to notice guys is that when you have these flash crashes like this one and this one that's not a healthy sign excuse me this one when you have the flash crash from 60k all the way down to 51k or even less at some exchanges and then you have the next one from 55k all the way down to 46k that is a sh that is a sign that something is wrong in the market that there are too many sellers there are not that many buyers and there are too many sellers in the market that the more the price goes down the more they are forced to sell more and more people are capitulating and there is no strength so you can also see that this was forming a downtrend rather than an uptrend so we also have like i said before we have the 50 day moving average so nothing was really going well but the other thing that i would notice on this chart right here is the same way we had those sharp moves down 
we also had some really interesting moves up which were always coming towards uh, near the places where the highs were so for example one was around 50 8k and the other one was around 61k so we had those interesting pumps in these situations where they quickly reversed so they usually these are usually artificial pumps maybe some of them happened over the weekend some others didn't happen over the weekends but overall the problem with these things right here is that the market essentially traps all the people that went long because they thought that was going to be a proper breakout and the market was going to continue higher. And the more you get those breakouts while the market is diverging, the scarier that is. And here we can see this massive wedge, it broke, that's not a good sign. Maybe some other people uh, would, would look at it this way, for example. So the breakout, uh, the breakdown had come a little earlier. I apologize about this because I had the log chart. So we had this right there. Okay, so that's the one diagonal. Maybe somebody else would see it from this angle right here where we have a proper breakdown of this level. We have a retest, a bearish retest. We have another leg down and that's not a good sign. Then we also have another breakdown, which is no great either. So finally, in terms of VTA that I wanted to mention, guys, at least on this chart before I move on to CME, it comes down to this resistance. It broke once that didn't hold the support, then the price came back to that level. Usually the price likes to come back to key breakdown levels and retest them before going lower. So that was a healthy action, but it was a healthy action in a bear market. So essentially what would have happened with this level right here, it happened in a more bearish way all the way up here. Now we didn't really have a proper retest of this area right here. So maybe, maybe the market does pull back. But up until then, we have seen a lot of key areas get broken. Not many great signs because it had those weird bottoms right here and right here. So the more times this resistance, this support, excuse me, was getting tested at 47K, the more likely it was that it would break. And the more it went lower, the more likely it was that it would go even lower because the market was not showing any signs of strength. So if I would look at the Bitcoin futures as well, because that's what I wanted to, to mention, that was something very important to me. For example, in this area, we have that double gap, one gap up and then one gap down. We essentially came back and filled the gap. So we had a double gap right here, almost filled the entire gap, essentially a bearish retest, and then we started dropping lower. And this is where this support was tested so many times. This was a double bottom. This level right here from 46K on the 5th of March up to up until the 12th of March, that was a second low. So it had a double bottom here and another bottom from those levels around all around 47, 46K. Then that broke with a gap down. We had those weird bottoms right here where there was no price action. Back then there was no price action back here as well on CME. So usually when there is such an interesting gap from this entire area, then the market tends to come back down. So that was not exactly a, top sig a topping signal, but it was just a signal that eventually the market would want to come back down to this area. So the more you test the support, the more gaps there are in the chart because this is essentially like a gap. The more some areas on CME haven't been traded, uh, or haven't traded those prices on CME, then the price usually tends to come back down to those areas. Now, of course, maybe you might be thinking already this level right here at 53K and the level at 47K might be very interesting levels for a bounce and you would be correct. So that would be a very, very nice place for anyone to start buying, to excuse me, to start selling if the market goes up there. So at least short term, these would be nice opportunities to sell the bounce rather than uh, buy there. So maybe buy now and get and start selling in those areas around 53 and 47 K. And finally, guys, I'm going to go through the indicators that I mentioned VWAP, MRVR, Mayer Multiple, Stock to Flow, NVT and SOPR. So let's start with the NVT, which what happened here, in my opinion, was that this indicator has held the price very nicely for many, many years. But 
once they start closing below it there was usually a big correction and the price does remind me a little bit of the top right here because the price failed around 40 excuse me 54k and then it fell much lower it's currently at 38k and that's a pretty significant dip usually when the market comes way below that indicator about 30 or 50 percent it usually bottoms there who knows if this is going to be the case once again but the main thing is that initially it did act as support but it didn't act as support for a very long time now the, the other thing that i would say is that these charts are from willie Wu's website wubull.com and his wunomic on twitter just just letting you guys know where i'm finding these charts because they are not mine but the reason that i also don't think like i mentioned before with the cycle top is that for example with this top indicator which has also worked fairly well over the years we haven't seen the market really really get really high and get to those key levels now of course there are other reasons that i'm going to mention in the future as to why i don't really think this is going to be the final final top and we're going to go higher over the next few years but maybe this time around we just have a very large correction and we even go to 20k or even 18k before we continue higher again i'm not sure if that's going to happen but i'm just letting you guys know that this for now looks like a correction that has been stretched and i'm just going to talk about it on the next videos but for now again when the nbt goes so low it might be a good opportunity to buy but the main thing that i want to mention about the nbt is that usually when it breaks and it breaks like that it's not a great sign so we would need to see the nbt uh, get broken again so that the price can go above it and to see it rally once again so we don't want to see it start trending down and for the price to keep on going lower and lower the next one guys is the vwap ratio so the vwap ratio is like a volume average of the price a volume weighted average of the price which is using uh, the volume the on-chain volume at least that's what i know that usually willy woo gets i don't really think it's going to be the volume from ordinary exchanges so it's using the on-chain volume and whenever we have that volume weighted average price um, have that ratio with the, the actual price we do get a top and we have seen it called the top several times like the pi indicator so there have been indicators which have been very very consistent with those tops which is very very interesting in my opinion because when you look back at those indicators these ones have at least both of them have called the top four times in a row now with this one the price did actually go a little higher first and potentially properly retest those highs and up until it gets all the way down to one maybe we have a little bit more uh, way to the downside because currently the price again at 38 and the moving the VWAP is around 23k maybe the moving average keeps on going higher but overall in my opinion um, it's a pretty nasty situation because it shows us that we have been making lower lows after a proper topping signal so that was another one that's very very interesting now the mega multiple didn't exactly call the top but it was very very close to calling the top because we got so overbought very quickly went so high that essentially we reached the same highs we had reached when the price was around 3-5k very early on as the same price as when the price was about 14k after the big run from the bottom of 2018 all the way up to 14k so it almost reached the cycle top of 2017 it didn't really get at the same level but it wasn't really that far off so it was probably something that could be seen as a proper selling signal now the price has gotten very oversold currently and that's why i'm not going to say that this is going to be a sell the bounce opportunity but overall just look at this once again and see how some of these indicators could be useful for you in the future for you to call the top now another one is the mrvr ratio so it's the market value to realized value so it's the market cap essentially to the realized cap these are some indicators that 
have been created by Murad Mahmoudov and David Pugh from some stuff that the CoinMetrix team had created because the realized cap is a creation of Nick Carter and Antoine Le Calvez. So essentially they use the when the coins moved last on chain to calculate the actual market cap, okay? To, actually, to essentially calculate the indicator, which is called realized cap, or even just call it a metric rather than an indicator, because the actual indicator is this thing here. So whenever the ratio between the realized cap goes really high compared to the actual price, then we usually have a top. And this time around, it also got so high it was pretty much the same level as the 2017 top maybe it was a little closer to what was the top at 2017 early on in june at 3k however currently we have seen a much steeper correction because back then the correction was only 40 percent whereas this time around we have dropped more than 40 percent and the market doesn't look as healthy so maybe that was another great call not perfect but when you combine those indicators together you can see that many of them had been showing very very similar things for quite some time now there are some other ones on here the mrvr z score which also uh, called the top or the MV VWAP, which is essentially the ratio of the VWAP and the market value, uh, the realized value essentially. So when we have that ratio, we can also see that once again, it was calling the top very, very nicely. And finally, guys, the last thing that I would mention is SOPR because this one, the main call that it made was it has been dropping for quite some time and usually whenever we touch this these levels we want to see a bounce historically whenever we touch this in a bull market it was a very nice buy the dip opportunity and the dip would come very quickly if there was another move lower at least when the SOPR would drop, it, would, it was not a great sign initially. Maybe that would be indicating that we are very, very close to a very massive capitulation. However, for now, this hasn't been updated. I don't really know the exact price. But the main thing I want to tell you guys is that the more times you touch it with the price bouncing very hard and then going down again, it's that at some point, once it starts closing below the one, the, the baseline, if it starts closing below the one to one ratio, essentially, then that means that the market is in a bad situation because it starts to turn bearish. Now, you might think we've seen this before at some occasions. However, this time around, that was a little bit more different because it's it's also happening while the market is going down. So that was essentially a confirmation because the market had started closing around 46, 48K below the baseline. And that was a very bearish signal. And that's why we also had some extra information on the fact that it was going to be a very brutal drop. So that's it for me, guys, for this video. It was probably a bit long. The next ones are going to be long as well, but there's so much information that I want to share with you. Tons of stuff. I apologize if some of that stuff aren't clear. You can message me if you want to ask me any more information. Maybe you want to arrange a coaching session with me because I can help you and guide you with all that stuff because that's part of what I do. I teach other people how to trade, to use certain tools. And of course, you can follow me on Twitter, on Telegram and on TradingView to get more information, to look up more of my videos and get, you know, first hand information when it comes out. And of course, you can remember to like, subscribe and share the video because this is how you can support the channel, guys. So also click the bell icon if you do subscribe to get more videos like this one. So once again, guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next one.